Yeah, I'm totally. I mean, I think that's why they say a lot of addicts kind of like remain in the same frame of mind of the age they were at when they got sober, you know, which kind of makes sense. Um, I mean, there's I'm very youthful still. I um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure I did like stunt a lot of that and I'm probably trying to like re-experience the normal kind of um life that one would have in their 20s or 30s just now in my 40s you know um <laughs> being kind of a little bit late to start or like a failure to launch so to speak um but yeah i mean all of that stuff definitely stunts your emotional and spiritual growth of course i mean of course yeah well we're not yeah we're just living to the next moment to use yeah yeah so, um, so I'm curious in, you know, so at this point, you know, you've gone through management's gone, even asking if you want help, you, you, as you said, politely declined, but it took another decade. What was, what was that decade for you, Natanya? Um, that decade was, you know, really dark. It was, a uh, you know, addiction getting so bad that I lived in a car for two years mm-hmm. with, the boyfriend that had gotten me on heroin, but at this point we're broken up. And now my, my new boyfriend, who is actually at a certain point became my fiance, the three of us living together in this car. Um, eventually we ended up moving downtown, like right off Skid Row on third and Alameda, which interestingly enough is super gentrified. Now I was actually down there the other night. So that was interesting. But when I was there, it was a trap motel and it was transients and, prostitutes and all sorts of different walks of life that lived in this motel. It was $500 a month rent, a shared bathroom per floor. Um, It was really crazy, you know, but it was downtown and it was close to the drugs and we lived there for a couple of years. And then it was kind of in and out of rehabs. And, um, and then I had a really traumatic experience happen when I was 25 and I lost a boyfriend um, to an overdose. Uh And then I got sober after that, I had a, slight relapse and then um went back to treatment at 30 years old stayed there for a year and i've been in recovery ever since and you know the last 10 years of my life now haven't looked perfect and there's been bumps in the road but i've been in recovery now for a decade you know but it's been a decade of um exploration and growth and learning truly truly who i am for the first time and like we were saying earlier, getting involved in the the mental health and substance abuse space and helping people get into treatment. And that's what I do in my professional life, right? So like stuff with Sean or whatever else, like that's my personal life. And that's kind of how I maintain abstinence and emotional and spiritual sobriety is I continue to remember to have a heart of service and that the more I think about you, the less I think about me. And, um, yeah, so it's been kind of a wild ride for sure. Um, but here I am. So <laughs> yeah, to say the least, huh? Yeah. Oh goodness. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry that the, gosh, I'm sure there was many a losses throughout. Definitely a lot addiction. of losses. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's just part of the deal, you know? Yeah. yeah. How, how are you able though to, uh, afford any sort of rehab? Was it, was it a state funded? Did you have basic insurance? Did you have stuff still from like SAG or anything that was helping you or what was? I had no, well, at that time, um, when I went to treatment this last time at 30, I had, um, before that relapse, I had had four years sober. So I had a, accumulated a little bit of stuff here and there, you know, um, I had a dog and I had, which who I still have my girl and I had a car and I had some clothes and some personal belongings, you know, I had rebuilt my life in those four years. Um, but no, I didn't have any insurance and I didn't have any money. So I called somebody who I had been in the program with and, um, they helped me get into this place. So it's a Jewish rehab in California called Beit Shuva, and they're very generous and they do often scholarship a lot of people, but if you go there, they'll help you get like the state insurance. I think they got me on Medi-Cal or something like that, which was able to fund, um, fund my stay there. And then at a certain point I was able to get on disability, unemployment, one of those things. And I was kind of able to pay a little bit of my own way. And yeah, 
how integral was doing a full year for you as opposed um, to, I mean, so many people are hit with now, like the way insurance is, at least in the state yeah, of California. Yeah, they barely stay three weeks. Exactly. Yeah. Um, which is so fucked. And obviously it's- this is the knocking doors down podcast featuring celebrities, experts, and everyday people who have overcome adversities, including addiction, mental health, and trauma to live purposeful lives. And that's what knocking doors down is all about.